for old fashioned recipes and your garden that needs a while sipping on Kentucky bourbon. Sit right back in your big red hat, we're taking Rural back from the urban. Listen to the stories with Kentucky Proud, share the giggles with all of your friends. You all are tuned in to Friends Drifting. Hey, I'm Joyce. Welcome to Friends Drift In, your source for the Farm to Table Movement in Eastern Kentucky. This is episode 12, and my guest today is Professor Port Valley. That's right. Wes Berry from Western Kentucky University. He is an author of a book coming out with the University of Kentucky Press called... It's called the Kentucky Barbecue Book. And tell me about your travels, Wes. How did this all come about? Oh, goodness. Well, you know, Joyce, Kentucky has been neglected when it comes to barbecue fame for Far too we long. think about Kansas City, where the U-Pike Bears are this week as we're mm -hmm, filming. Mm -hmm. We think of Texas. That's right. South Carolina. Uh, North, Carolina North Carolina and Memphis. What about Kentucky? Well, Kentucky has great barbecue. And the thing is, people just don't know about it much outside this place. Even some people within the state don't even realize we have such awesome so barbecue. So you're the barbecue troubadour? Yeah, you got it. I, I, I have tripped around all over Kentucky. I've eaten at 167 barbecue places to date in this state. And in the book, I write about my favorite places, and that's around 111 of them. There you go. Now, we talk about the secrets in the sauce. Tell me what kind of sauces we're going to do today. Well, we're going to do two different kinds of sauces. Uh, in the book, I cover some regional barbecue sauce styles. We have Charlie Winter's uh, bourbon sauce. Now, Charlie's a friend of mine who lives in Frankfurt. He was generous enough to share this recipe with us, and it's in the book. It's kind of a sweet sauce, which is what we in Eastern Kentucky are accustomed to. That's so we'll, right. So we're going to start it's with... It's like sweet and tangy because it's got that vinegar in it as well. All right. We're going to start with a little ketchup here. About a cup. About a cup. And then we follow that with some sorghum. We follow that with a little vinegar and water. That's right. Cut and cut right your, there. Uh, a little right vinegar there. and water. There's your vinegar and water. Um, Keep that mixed around. Get that mixed. Mm -hmm. Then we add the sorghum. Not molasses. Y'all, in his book, he called it molasses, and I'm calling him out on it right here How about now. that? Well, you know what? I grew up calling it sorghum. <laughs> I don't know why I did that in the book. It's sorghum. We don't allow molasses in, in the Friends Drift Inn in the Big Red Barn. So, all right. Fair enough. So add sorghum. You got a little sorghum. Get that mixed up. Now, normally we'd cook this up a little bit. About five minutes. Five minutes, but for Medium the purposes heat. of, of uh, TV. For the purpose of TV, not. go ahead and add that honey there. I will. This honey is local honey. This came from Neil Hunt, one of my buddies over on Coon Creek. Mm -hmm. um, it's getting near season where the bees are active. Y'all going to be seeing. Um, Maybe some production of autumn olive honey this year, where a lot of people are moving their bees into uh, mm -hmm. up on the mine sites and catch that autumn olive, which is an early bloomer. Right on. Really feeds the bees. Then we're going to add a little bit of cayenne a pepper bit for that heat. Little bit of cayenne pepper, you got it. Now Charlie often puts some chipotle in his. Right, when we can't get chipotle here in the mountains. And I am sorry. I looked everywhere. You know, chipotle will give it that nice little smoky flavor, but that's okay. This meat's going to be smoky enough. Right. As it is. Now, the, the sorghum and the honey makes it give it a glisten. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what really makes it pretty. And we're going to add a little bit of it is good looking sauce. pepper. Oh, it is. Let's see. How's yeah. it smelling, Wes? Oh, yeah. Now. Well, it, it could smell a little bit better, Joyce. <laughs> well, you know, it calls for a quarter of a cup of bourbon. I think that's now just this the thing to make it smell out. better. This will give it a little bit of a woodsy, woodsy flavor. Yes, um, bourbon. You're not going to get the alcohol, but you're going to pick up that smoke from the oak because it's sipped in and out of those yeah. barrels. That's right. It's coming up on the bourbon classic is coming up down That's in right. Louisville. A bunch of chefs will be involved, distillers. It'll be a great time. Learn a lot about the Kentucky heritage, and I'm really excited about and that. And I think it's fun that you just said down in Louisville, right? Yeah, because you're, <laughs> I guess for you it's up, up in Louisville, isn't it's, it? Well, it's actually, isn't it kind of up in Louisville for you as well? Well, no, it's down. Everything's See, down now, Louisville. that just smells just a little bit better after the addition mm -hmm. of that right. Now Maker's you do Mark. this red sauce. We'll put it on that. We would put it on the stove. We've got it on the stove back here. Mm -hmm. We had it cooking about 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, it gets very thick. Why don't you pour some of the 
red sauce into the bowl over there so they can see the difference. Okay, sure thing. So this sauce has been cooking down for a while. Right. And which bowl do you want me to use? That bowl right there. Oh, bowl right beside you. Oh, okay. Here we go. So this is what it's going to look like after some cooking down. I think it's Char really Charlie recommends. Oh, that's pretty. Yep. Uh, Tomato-based sauce. That's it's, what I grew up with. That's you know, right. Any, tomato. You, you can't go wrong with, with tomatoes. Well, from what I understand, you know, in my book I feature three Appalachian barbecue places. I understand that mountain folks are doing a lot of meat cooking, but uh, not necessarily in restaurants. But Except for Pig and the Poke. Now, and you featured Pig and the Poke. That's what I'm saying. Pig, with the pig and the Poke. You got it. it. They're in the book. And Brian Kramer at Pig and the Poke said, my folks here love sauce. They like their meat sauced. Now, over in the western part of the state, people serve the pulled pork without a whole lot of sauce on it. Anyway, good tomato sauce here. You'll be seeing this later. Now, pull that other one up up here and pour it out in that other bowl, Wes. Now, here is, here is a very strange concoction. I grew up in Barron County, down in the south central part of the state. Barron County is a couple counties away from Monroe County. And uh, how far from here, uh, hour-wise? I think it was 300 miles for me to travel over here. All right. And that's from Bowling Green. Y'all, this is very weird. This is a very strange thing. This sauce is more like a North Carolina sauce, which is basically what George Washington was cooking up when he was doing barbecues back in the day. Uh, call it the father of our country sauce, maybe. But in Monroe <laughs> County, they, they just call it dip. Now, dip. The, the Monroe County sauce is, and I'll check this out. It's very, very thin. I'm going to make a mess if I try to pour just this because it, it is so thin. Just pour it. Now, check that out. This is mostly a... a uh, you see how, you know, a dip. So you would, you know, you dip in a sandwich and that right. type of thing. But what's in this, Wes? All right, folks. Here's what, the, in this sauce, you got white vinegar. You got lard. Lard. Yes, lard. Butter, cayenne pepper, and black pepper. Sounds that is the traditional me. Monroe <laughs> County sauce. I think the butter uh, allows the vinegar to adhere to the pork shoulder. Now, in Monroe County, the Monroe County style is... They cook, they take a Boston butt, and they actually freeze it. It's not such a good thing to freeze your meat, but in this case, it's a good thing. Then they slice it thinly on a saw, and then they grill those pieces over our live hickory coals for about 45 minutes, and they sop it with this. They flip and dip, flip and dip. If you get tired of flipping and dipping, <laughs> then you, uh, you go the other way. You dip and flip. So uh, here we go. Monroe County sauce. It's, it's yellow because of that good butter in there. Now, I'm planning on feeding the crowd today, so before y'all got here, I had soup beans on the back burner. Mom and niece did not know how to make soup beans. Y'all, it's simple. You just throw a little bit of beans and water, and you boil them. <laughs> okay. And you cook them down. It's traditional. Today, I did a 16 beans, mm. and I used some of the beans that we've grown here at the Friends Drift Inn Garden. Nice. We're going to do cornbread, which is a natural accompaniment because you have a lot of the, you know, the, the sweetness of the corn with the sweetness of the pork mm -hmm. is going to, and I made peach cobbler. Oh, have mercy. Look at that. Now, y'all, this isn't just any peach cobbler. Move that dip all out right, of my way. All right, all right. We'll do. <laughs> this is inspired by 82 Queen down in Charleston. It's not... Uh, uh, usually when we think of cobblers here in eastern Kentucky, we put uh, just a biscuit top on the top and throw a little bit of sugar. This has got bourbon soaked pecans on the top. Mm. And you put a, a almost like a cake batter on the bottom. And then you put the pecans on the top yeah. and the cake batter oozes up through. Oh, you're killing me, Joyce. You know, well, it's friends drift in. <laughs> And we got to do things right. Let's see if you can see the. Um, Are you telling me we're going to get our dessert before we? You're going to get your dessert uh, before, before get you get your barbecue going. We all be with barbecuing all night, and I'm starving. So we're going to have peach cobbler right now. Oh, that's great. Oh, Hickory Barbecue in Owensboro serves banana pudding as a side dish. I, I think, love banana pudding. I think this should be on there too. Mmm. Mm. Crunchy. I love the bourbon in this mm, Just a little bit. Makes it really woodsy. Mm-hmm. Similar to, I mean, and we're talking all about woods today in the next mm. segment. The <laughs> bourbon really comes through there. So the next thing we're going to do 
is we're going to move this show outside. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we got a couple Boston butts smoking mm -hmm. up on the smoker. And, well, let's go check it out. All right. All right. We're smoking at the Big Red Barn. And, what, and don't yeah. I love a man that smells like hickory. I'll I'm tell here you, it's with... an aphrodisiac, George. <laughs> uh, I'm here with Wes Ferry, author of the Kentucky Barbecue Cookbook, and we are doing big things at the Big Red Barn. Yes, so we what are. are. We've been cooking, y'all, since last night. How many hours has this meat been? Uh, I think 16? This, put this on around 9 o'clock last night. Right now, it's probably 17, 18 hours that these Boston butts have been cooking. Oh, they're going to be tender and good, or your name is Mud. Well, that's right. That's the idea. You just uh, <laughs> low and slow, you know, when you're cooking a pork butt. And by the way, I think Boston butt's one of the best cuts of meat that you can get. In the western part of the state, they do smoke whole pork shoulder some. The only danger being that sometimes that shank end could dry out before the middle part. How do you gets resolve dried out. that? Well, you resolve it by cutting off that shank end, which is basically a Boston butt. It's that big part of the pork shoulder. And, you know, another little thing is Boston butts have more fat in them, the shoulder has more fat than the hams. Right. So some people, just a few people in the western part of the state, actually smoke up the hams because it's leaner and you get less waste. Never have heard of that. But you don't get that good, yummy fattiness that you get right. from a, a Boston butt. So ideally, these things, you know, you'll put them on, you'll smoke them low and slow. That's the barbecue mantra, right? 200, 220 degrees for, I'd say 15, 16, 17 hours, you know? And what, before we put them on, we used a little bit of, here, hold this. That's right, that's right. <laughs> we used a little bit of coarse salt, kosher salt. We patted that down mm. on these these frozen ones. We patted it down. Um, you want to use a kosher salt that's got a real coarse grain so it doesn't mm. dissolve and it gets that crust and, right. and, and what they call the bark. And then we also patted it down with a heavy, a really coarse grain pepper. Mm -hmm. Of course, I use Matt Jamie's bourbon barrel because it's a, a Kentucky Proud product. But any coarse pepper would work, and y'all you, can see it's real gritty and it gives it a lot of texture Absolutely. to the meat. Absolutely. It's like the kosher salt of pepper, right? Yeah, exactly that, right. Yeah. So tell me about what the difference is between Eastern Kentucky and Western Kentucky when it comes to barbecue. Well, I think the biggest difference is that folks over here, they like sauce with their barbecue and it tends to be like a heavier tomato based sauce, right. like for instance at Pig and a Poke in Prestonsburg. Right. Uh, and the meat is served with sauce on it. Now over the western part of the state, you often get your meat served naked. Just naked? Naked, naked meat. <laughs> just some salt, now Joyce. Just some salt and pepper and smoke and some good love and you know, you, if you pull that stuff apart, that's a, a, enough seasoning for me. However, I can appreciate a good sauce too, like that bourbon sauce that we have on the side. Now, so we've smoked these pork butts. That's right. For 16 hours. We patted them down with salt and we put them on. What kind of wood do we use? Can you tell me a little bit about how the box works in, in the woods? Abs absolutely. So this smoker you provided me with, and it's my first time using it ever, you know, you need to know your smoker well. And I think I've warmed up to this one pretty quickly. This is a barrel type smoker. So you got, so your, you got, the, you got this barrel shape. You got your cooking area right here. And on the side, you got a firebox. And we put the firebox the, over on the other firebox side. over there. We put a hardwood lump charcoal in there, which I do favor because it doesn't have as many fillers as uh, some of the regular charcoal Rickets, that people right. have known for years. And we've been throwing chunks of hickory in there. Now, over in a lot of places in Kentucky, I really love Kentucky barbecue because there's still places using a lot of wood in their cooking, which of course gives you that great smoke hickory penetration. Hickory gives it a sweetness and a woodsiness that is very distinctive. Um, growing up, we used to, in the winter, you know, as we would gather hickory nuts, I mean, a lot of times we would throw a little bit of the hickory nuts yeah, yeah. on, on the work smoker, too. and it, it really made a huge difference. Any kind of wood that yields a nut, you can use. I know people using red oak, which can make your meat kind of bitter. Right. Hickory is, of course, the perfect wood. Uh, we don't mess around with that mesquite much in these parts because we no, don't have it, right? but down in Texas, that's big doing. Yes, they do. I like using fruit woods as well in my smoking. Sometimes uh, Apple wood. And, and by the way, folks, uh, green wood, I think, is preferable to the dry wood because it adds more moisture in there because, you know, that the moisture cooks out of the green wood. It's a good thing. It also lasts longer. It doesn't burn up on you as quickly. Mm. Show us what you got going <laughs> on because I'm about to die. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> What's up? It is one of my favorite odors, but this is pretty intense. By the way, this is about the most beautiful place I've ever smoked meat in. It's gorgeous here. I Appalachia love it. has a lot going on, Wes, and I'm proud to be a hillbilly. Well, yes, ma'am. And uh, one of my other names, Professor Porkbelly, is one of my nicknames, and Professor Hillbilly is another one. So uh, 
<laughs> we got hills in uh, Barron County, Kentucky, too. They're just not as big as the ones you have here. Now, yeah. <laughs> let's get let's get one of these, these Boston butts off there, because I actually, we have this Monroe County sliced right. pork shoulder here, and we need more surface area for that anyway. All right. So, so I, I don't think this will burn my hand too much. You can tell, folks, that this is just about falling apart. Oh, I mean. And that's a real good thing. Um, so I'm being sneaky. You go ahead. You go ahead. You should just be able to get in here. That, oh, yeah. Check that out. Oh, my goodness. Right. Get in here. Pull that apart. It's moist. It's got that good bark on the outside. And try it, Wes. Try I'm it. I'm going. I'm going to let it smoke. And y'all mm -mm. can see, show me where it's pink. That's where the smoke has penetrated. And That's then, right. And then the, the inner side. And you would think that if you cooked a pork butt mm -hmm. for 16 hours it would be dry and I'm assuming that y'all can see I mean that's bone now yep, you, but you, you can see oh yeah it just pulls right moist. out awesome that is oh this is so good well this is not an oven but I would say that's loving from the oven right there loving from the smoker now so. here's another regional variation some folks just like pulling their pork some folks like it finely chopped uh, I like to just mix it around Get that bark, that external bark mixed in with the good uh, oh, you saved stuff the inside. Bark for your, you saved the bark for your favorite man. You know what? I, <laughs> I've heard... Do you have a favorite man, Wes? <laughs> uh, me. <laughs> no, that's just... Yeah, no. So anyway, that looks real good. You want to try some with that uh, bourbon sauce that we have that out here? Mm, no, we'll save we'll, that for later. We'll save that for the table. Now, here's what we're going to do. All right. We got that off here. I'd like to get that other butt off as well. Okay. And just for the purposes of having more space, we'll take that and sit it right on top of there. All That's right. crew food right there. Now, Ooh, I'm, check that out. Crew food. Y'all, you now, should see my cameraman you, smile. Be careful. It's good. So we're going to... It's all good. Here's what we're looking at right here. The Monroe County style, as I noted before, really, really strange thing they do down there in Monroe County. You can get this style of barbecue in like five South Central Kentucky counties. And like I say, it's the same cut of meat as that right there. It's a Boston butt, y'all. That's right. And you wouldn't think, I mean, they looked at me, you can get these at Food City, mm -hmm. and what I had them do was I had them freeze it before I purchased it, and they cut them about a quarter of an inch thick yes. with a bandsaw. And you can see that we're putting pork butt on the on the smoker yes. that is frozen i mean it's literally it is frozen so that's really strange Wes. it is very strange again um i, I would generally not recommend freezing meat but you got to do it to get that thin, thin slice. slice and the thing is because these are so thin you can see the bone is still in there that little uh u-shaped bone right. uh when these things cook up i eat it all you can see the fat marble in there mm -hmm. and basically <laughs> everything everything but the bone and i'd eat the bone if i could because that dip sauce if you like vinegar and you like butter i mean who doesn't like butter uh, this, this was lard and butter yes, and, and vinegar and a little bit of water and oh man this is a crazy it's so, crazy and cayenne pepper so in monroe county and in these other places they burn down hickory wood slabs to coals when they get to the coal stage they take a shovel and they shovel those underneath the meat. The meat cooks about that far from the coals. And they cook pretty hot. A piece of this should be, the longer the better, but about 45 minutes should be enough to get one of these pieces cooked. We got a couple on here that are just about where they need to be. All when right. You, Let's, check that out. You when, burnt me up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. Uh, I can't even see what I'm I, doing. I'm in a blue haze. <laughs> what you want to do is, uh, that's some hickory. <laughs> You want to keep an eye on these because you don't want to burn them. You can see this piece right here, that's pretty much ready. And it has gotten a little charred because it was close to that firebox on the side where the, the flame leaks out. Now, if you're going to eat this stuff in Monroe County. You got to have the dip. That's right. Now, they will say you want it. You, you go in, you order, you say, I want a shoulder plate. They call this shoulder. A shoulder plate. I want a show, which is a, you know, a plate of this thin sliced pork shoulder. Okay. Um, they'll say, well, you want it dipped or sprinkled. If What's you, the difference? If you want just a little bit of heat, you say, well, you, I will have it sprinkled. Okay. If you want 
your mouth to be on fire, you can say dip it, or as I do, I say dip the hell out of it. And, <laughs> and, and it will pretty much burn your head off if, uh, if it's a place that has well, the hot dip sauce. Anoint me, baby. That's right, all right, so here we go. <laughs> I would say, well normally, you take it with your tongs, dip it in there, and it's, it's dripping with the stuff. That's the vehicle for your taste to be just crazy. So just give that a try. Now, I'm real curious about this, Wes. <laughs> it is hot, but it takes you a minute. That's right. It, it's got a creeping heat. Yes, ma'am. Because of the lard and the the butter, you know, it's not that that sweet glaze like what we're used to at all. I mean, it's it's a totally different animal. That's right. So, uh, but so good. Most and the heat just keeps coming. I mean, it kind of builds. Everybody gets the, these barbecue places down there. They get their meat from the same butcher, Ross and Ross Meat Market in Tompkinsville. We um, use Food City, and we was happy. And here, here, here's the deal. Some places get their shoulders sliced a little thicker than others. Yeah. This is on the thin side right here. So it kind of turns like a little jerky-like. Okay. And it, of course, it soaks up this incredible amount of smoke. If we were using live hickory coals, you'd still be getting the smoke, but we're actually getting more smoke intensity now right. than you'd normally get. All so, right, uh, well, let's plate this up and finish this out. I am starving. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I can't stop eating it. <laughs> We've had an eventful day today here at Friends Drift Inn with my guest, Wes Berry. He is a professor at Western Kentucky University. He specializes in American literature, mm -hmm. particularly Southern and Kentucky. You got it. Two of my favorite classes. Yeah. He's written a book called Kentucky Barbecue. He has a Facebook page called Adventures. It's called Ridiculously Named. It's long. Wes Berry's Kentucky Barbecue Adventures on Facebook. And you can follow him because he's still doing adventures here. Now, down in the mountains, we can't cook without cast iron, Wes. I do love some cast iron as well. Now you gotta have, and hopefully this didn't stick, y'all, and it's heavy. Oh, yeah. And cornbread. Now, now, look at that nice crispness that you got there. How'd you do that, Joyce? Oh, I... Two cups of flour, or two cups of cornmeal, a cup of flour, a little bit of egg, and some buttermilk. But the thing, Wes, is that down here in the mountains, uh -huh. you got to break bread. Yes. Because if you cut this cornbread, you're going to have bad luck on your way back home to well, Bowling Green. We don't and we need, can't have that. We don't need any of that. Now, we talked about the differences in Western and Eastern Kentucky barbecue. Yes. We, talked, we haven't talked a little bit about you. You live with your wife. Elisa. And you have sheep? We have uh, a sheep now. Okay. Uh, we had a, a male and a female You're sheep. You're not going to tell that story again, are you? <laughs> I don't have to. We lost a sheep recently and we ate it, by the way. You Mutton. said she was still flexible. <laughs> you, you, again, make lim lemonade if, if life gives you lemons. So, uh, and by the way, mutton, Kentucky's known for that. We have 18 places in the state that serve mutton. A mutton is a female sheep, at least a year old, or a castrated male. And, and yeah, yeah, go ahead. Let me try some of that sauce while you're talking. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Here's that Charlie Winters. Now, this is the sweet sauce. sauce. This is what we did with, with the honey and the, the sorghum molasses. That's right. A little bit of ketchup and some herbs and mm. spices. Going to make that gloss up. Now you also made the dip, and we did that with the thin sliced that, pork butt. Put it on the grill frozen. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of such a thing, but it is so good. Now what did you say about that dip and sprinkle? Well, again, if you go into a restaurant and you ask for it sprinkled, it would be a little hot. But if you get it dipped, then I'll just dunk your whole piece of shoulder in there. I used to get a side of dip sauce and actually put it in my vinegar slaw for that extra Oh man, kit. I love Can vinegar that? slaw. Now that's pretty much what you want it to look like right there. Nice char on it. Got um, lots of edge and the sugars have, yeah, have creamed it's, up. It's good for you. And now we talked about the Monroe County sauce yes. being, having a lot of fat content in it. I don't know whether you can get that picture, but it, you can see the separation that's where the right. lard and the butter that's have, right. have come around. And but, it is spicy hot, y'all. I'm gonna stir that up just a little bit and 
like I say, if you want the heat on your tongue, just uh, dip your stuff in there and mm. you'll get it. We've got soup beans, mm -hmm. peach oh. cobbler for dessert, yes, West Berries, Western Kentucky style barbecue, and our style of barbecue. We've had a big day. Recipes will be available on Friends Drift Inn. Mm -hmm. Follow Wes on Facebook. And if you're really technologically savvy, as I'm not, you can go to KY Barbecue, KY BBQ Prof on Twitter, and I have another Facebook page with a TV show that I'm doing down the Bowling Green. Excellent. You are doing the local traveler, the the Bowling Green segment. That's right. Amy has a show. I'm the local person down there in charge of that part of the state. Buy Wes's book, the Kentucky Barbecue Book. Yes, Tell about all of his adventures throughout the great Commonwealth. And you know what we say on Friends Drift In, Wes? What we say, Joyce? We say, sure, sure the giggles. giggles. <laughs>